Good afternoon, everyone. This is Curtis Flower. I'm the manager here at Kelly's Beach Liquors in Panama City Beach, Florida. And we got a special guest with us today, Christiana Gifford with Honey Bubbles. And it's a rather unique product, unique story, and a unique individual. Thank you. So how did you get into this business? It's a, it's a strange cycle of events. Not strange, but um, it, it was very serendipitous. I was um, living in Las Vegas, actually, and I was working in hospitality. Okay. Um, I had my degree at the time in early child education, um, but did not love teaching at the time. I didn't. I had done some student teaching, and I just really had fallen in love with hospitality. And I was learning a lot about wines and just food, and it really opened up my mind to um, other options. And I started working in their their wedding department, and I then quickly was like. Oh, maybe I could get into makeup. I would love to do bridal makeup. And that's kind of what took me to LA, to Los Angeles, and um, moved to Los Angeles. And, yeah. So, Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So, you like the losses? I do, I do. I like the losses. Now I like the gains, but I'll take the losses. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I moved from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, and very quickly my rent was like triple. And oh, yeah. I was doing makeup, but I realized, okay, I need to do something else um, because I need to be able to make it here. So I started working in a fine dining establishment. It was one of the leading hotels of the world, Shutters on the Beach, and they do something very generous with their staff by putting all of their fine dining servers through the WSCT. They put you through your level one and your level two. And that's when I really started to learn about wine and my passion just kind of ignited. And um, So you didn't learn that in the hospitality end of it in Las Vegas, you learned it in... The in, in my wine education. But I learned yeah. so much in the other parts. I learned about service, I learned about um, uh, just event, event planning, yeah. dealing with the masses. It's, and it all kind of goes together now at this point. Sure. Um, so, but it wasn't, and, and I, I started to love wine um, early, early on, but I didn't, I didn't really know too much about like European wines. Um, I just had the wines that I liked and, and I stuck with those for the most part. But when I went through the WSCT and when I actually started working in our fine dining program at Shutters, I, I started to really appreciate wine. And interestingly enough, um, we learned a lot about the Muscat grape, which has a very, I don't know, um, an interesting background, an interesting reputation. It's yeah. not like something that you would think a master psalm would light up when he starts to talk about. But our master psalm, his name is Peter Neptune, and when he was telling us about Muscat, he lit up. And I learned so much about that particular grape varietal that I didn't know. I didn't realize like it was it was originally grown in Greece. It's it's got so much nobility to it. Mm -hmm. It was um, the first text around the Muscat grape is that it was so vivaciously sweet. It was destroyed by insects, and particularly the honeybee. Oh, there's the lead in. Yeah, and um, we tried different styles, and you know, it just it 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 was like one of those moments where I was like, gosh. It was one of those moments in wine, which I'm sure you've had so many of, where your eyes are just open to something that you're like, whoa, I didn't realize that, you know, that this was here. It's, it's like a treasure box. Um, and now I've had lots of those moments, but um, that was the first moment where I fell in love with the Muscat grape. Well, you know, that's probably as misunderstood of a grape as the Riesling is. Yes. Because a lot of people think that Rieslings are super sweet, and they can be, but the range of degrees of dry to sweet right. and Riesling is so great. And after tasting your product, I've noticed that you kind of went a little bit to the dry side, but still maintaining that little fruit structure right. to it. Right, right, right. And it took us a long time to get, because it's now 2018, and I'm, I'm still with this story back in 2013, so it was just like conceptual, but yeah, we, we love what we have now product-wise and style-wise because we are able to pull back the sweetness and we have done some other unique stuff with it. But originally, it was not like that. The whole story behind Honey Bubbles, we, 
with myself and my, the, my friend, uh, Scott Roughgarden, who was sitting next to me in that course. And we were just casually talking about starting a wine brand. And, um, and that's WSCT, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did the CSW okay. course. Okay, yeah. great, great. It's a great course. I mean, I, I, the WSCT is what we went through because we had to do a lot of service stuff too. Right. So like opening a magnum of champagne without the proper like, way, yeah. Mm -hmm, and, yeah. Um, you know, just presentation. So both, both programs are like really, really awesome. Um, and I'm so thankful for the WSCT and, yeah. and um my wine knowledge, but it stopped when we started Honey Bubbles, and now I'm like getting back into it. But good for you. Yeah, I I love. I mean, I love wine is just so infinite, and I enjoy learning about it. Yes. Um, so yeah, so we then we were like, okay, well, we uh, want to start a wine company, and we have no money, and we're like waiting tables. So we just. We're very lucky to have an establishment where a lot of technology investors go and they make a lot of their deals there ah. um, at this lobby of the hotel we were working in. So we, we found an investor to believe in our concept. We didn't even have product at the time. And so our first batch of wine with our very minimal funds came from New Mexico. Really? Mm -hmm. We ordered 400 cases of wine from um, right, outside of Santa, right outside of Santa Fe where they're growing Gruet. Right. Yes. And it was great juice. It just was, they only had 450 cases worth and right. um, everything was done poorly. We, we forgot to put the skew on our label. Like uh, we, it was just, yeah, uh, you know, totally different. Um, but we sold through it because we wanted it to have that philanthropic angle and we chose bees. So we, I've loved bees. I was always a kid that preferred honey over maple syrup. Um, Scott was very adamant about like, let's have bubbles in the name. So it just, Felt together that simply, and um, we we called it Honey Bubbles, and we sold through that product. Um, so many people in Los Angeles and now in other cities are aware of what's going on with the bees and colony collapse disorder. Right. Yeah, so. I was reading about that, and that seems to be a big issue. Yeah, uh, we're even uh, seeing that with the Tupelo honey uh, hives around the area. Yeah. So that that's a big 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 concern. How does your brand interact with helping save the bees? So um, at first, it was just with one organization um, because we were so small, right. and that the name of that organization is Honey Love, and we gave back at the time with a little bit of our investor money, and then also with product because surprisingly, there are um, a lot of events around the honeybees. There's National Bee Day, which is actually next Saturday. It's oh, August 18th. Okay. And so we would donate product and, and then just a lot of awareness. That organization would lobby for less strict beekeeping rules around um, the city of Santa Monica. So we would help with that kind of stuff. So just a lot of education, funds, product. Um, and that's how we started to give back. And now it's trickled into... Other ways of giving back, we give back to organizations that do non-harmful removal of bees without fumigation. Um, so instead of going in there and like smoking out a hive, right. they remove the hive. Is that detrimental to them? Oh hives? yeah, if you if you smoke out a hive, the, the bees will die. Um, so, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So these. See, I always thought that was there to relax them there or something. Are, there are certain ways where you can do some sort of like light smoking where it'll like calm the hive down and right. then you can remove it, but you can't just completely smoke it out. Um, so. They will actually take the hive and uh, it'll be a beekeeper that'll come to you. Sure. So it'll be a, a beekeeper that'll come into your home and take the bees and then they'll take them either back to where they keep their own bees or to somewhere else where they, the other like bees Polonate. are being kept. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we'd get back now to that and then just a lot of educational programs around um, colony collapse disorder of the honeybee and right. figuring out what's going on and, and how can we prevent it in the future. Is there any universities or anything that are studying that yes. and working toward that goal? Oh, yes. Goal? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, UNLV actually has a really cool program because in Las Vegas, they've completely outlawed beekeeping um, because the, the bees have started to Africanize. And um, what ha happens when a bee gets Afri African Africanized bees, they kill. They right. swarm and they kill. So right. um, drones... What's so interesting, I, I love bees, so what's interesting is that when drones from a hive 
mate with a queen, they don't mate with the queen in their own hive, they find a different hive. So these drone bees in Nevada and in the desert were going out to mate with a different queen and they would mate with a queen of an Africanized colony and then they would come back and the whole colony would be Africanized. So it was like this spreading of Africanized wow, bees. So that's, um, that's, that's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what's, what's terrible about that is you know, then everybody's afraid of bees, and of course, I mean, why wouldn't you be afraid of an Africanized colony of bees? But it's like, why do they do that? How, what can we do to prevent the, the bees from mating with, you know? So it's, 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 it's very interesting to study bees. It's, mag, it's like, you know, they're so magnetic in their thinking and very purpose-driven. So it's, it's about like finding out why they're doing what they're doing and how the future will be affected by it, so. So, let's talk about the the create we talked about the creation uh -huh. uh, where are you at now in your distribution network um, yeah. with the product how's how successful have you become we've become uh, very successful I mean we have a long way to go but we sold through those first 400 cases from um, New Mexico and um, we then were approached by our, our current supplier and an amazing group called the Curious Cork, which are importers from Europe and they have a big presence in Northern Italy. And they were like, we love what you guys are doing. Um, Cause Scott and I at that time were still driving around wine in our off time, in our cars, working as servers at this restaurant, um, trying to stay like in compliance with all the regulatory stuff that you have to have when you're, when you're selling alcohol. And um, they, they were like, we can, we can help you with this. We can help you to scale and you can fall under our, our umbrella of distribution. So we merged with them last year and cheers. Cheers. Nice fine bubbles. Yes. I love these glasses, by the way. These are my favorites. They're Schatz Wiesel mm. and these are called the Pure. And I just love the shape of them. They're beautiful. And they laser etch the center uh -huh. so that the bubbles form down into center oh yeah and then they you rise up the center of the yeah you can see champagne. a steady stream like right up the center yeah i love that so yeah these are my favorites to success mm, thank you cheers cheers so how many cases uh, are you at right now annually so um Right when that happened, we ordered 3,000 cases of wine. Okay. So we scaled from 400 to 3,000, and that was about um, nine months ago. Right. Um, and then we've since ordered another 3,000 cases, and then we'll probably be doing another 3,000 cases in the next two to three months. So hopefully in, we'll be right at around 9,000 in production in a little over a year and a half. Now, what states are you in? When we fell under the umbrella of distribution with Curious Cork, we are allowed legally to sell in 42 states, but it takes time, as you know. Um, we, one of our first states that we came to outside of California was Florida, and we were entered in that Panama City Beach um, Southern Wine and Living or Southern Southern Living uh, Wine Festival. Right, that was two years ago. Yeah, well, we did the one in, this March. Yeah, that was uh, uh, Garden and Gun. Okay, I did that one. Okay. Yeah. So we came out for that, and we won the event. We, Honey Bubbles won People's Choice Best Wine. Excellent. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It was great. It was great. And it's great. I love our distribution team here, the DeBaccos, Tom yes. DeBacco. For, uh, for those of you who don't know, we've got a local distributor that actually lives not far from the store who uh, does a lot of business with us. His name's Tom DeBacco. And uh, he's kind of a friend of uh, Beach Liquors. And uh, so, yeah, he picked your brand up and uh, yeah. started promoting it. He did, yeah. And they are lovely because um, he and his wife are um, just very kind. And they have done things for our brand that maybe a larger distributor wouldn't do. Right. Um, they. Yeah, I came from a larger distributor. I understand how that works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's so important to have that because we're still grassroots and... Um, we're excited to grow with them and it seems like there's a big demand for um, our wine down here as far as the palate's concerned. People are very, right. um, people are, our product is very well received here. So um, we've sold a lot in Florida, we have Illinois we're doing really well in, Ohio, Kentucky, 
um, Colorado, um, uh, Nevada, and Texas are kind of our focus. Wow. So, oh, that, you know, well, those yeah. 3,000 cases can turn into uh, a lot in yes. a short period of time. Yeah, it can. All it takes is a couple of key markets to jump on it and, right. and uh, do something with it. And I know that we do well with it here at uh, Beach Liquors. And um, by the way, you just did a tasting with our customers this yeah. afternoon. And uh, so that worked out real well. It did, and, it did. And we appreciate you coming in to seeing us and spending your time because trust me, I know your time's valuable because you're trying to grow a brand and it takes a lot of hard work and traveling right. and days away from home. You were telling me you've been gone 30 days. Yeah, yeah, this wow. month I've been gone yeah. market to market, but I enjoy it. I really, this has become my home. Honey Bubbles has really become my main focus. So um, yeah. I'm just, I really am enjoying every day and the new opportunities that come with it. Well, we, you're welcome to any time you want to come. We'll be glad to host you. And, Thank you. Uh, I think I'll be uh, back in October, so I'll take you up on that. Oh, please do. That'd be great. Matter of fact, we can hook you up on a Friday tasting Perfect. that we do here every uh, Friday from 5 to 7. Yeah. That'd be so, great. yeah. And, you know, what's the most exciting thing is you kind of remind me of myself when I was in my 20s and I got into the wine and liquor business. And uh, for being such a young entrepreneur like you are, uh, it's really great to see people like you, Thank you taking something, believing in something, building a brand, and going out there and actually working hard to make the brand work. And uh, with that, that's it's congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very special for that. Oh, I do okay? appreciate that. So, thank you um, for seeing it. Well, I I appreciate it. And once again, yes. Cheers. Cheers. And. Thank you very much uh, from Thank Kelly's you. Beach Liquors uh, Tasting Room here in Panama City Beach, Florida. Come see us and check us out. We've got a lot to offer. Thanks and have a great day. Bye. Thank you.